We are back, ladies and gentlemen, getting ready for our amateur women's flyweight title bout. We have Melissa Gastic taking Charity Walker. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape for the bout. We've got Melissa Gastic, 27 years of age, 5 feet 3 inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds with an unbeaten amateur record of 4 wins and 0 losses. She is fighting Charity Walker, 23 years of age, 5 feet 5 inches tall, 126 pounds with an amateur record of 5 wins and 3 losses. This is going to be a very exciting fight. Let's send it over to our ring announcer, Dan Bogan, to call in the Ladies fighters. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Amateur Flyweight Championship of the World of Vacant title to be determined in a matter of moments. Let's call from the blue corner, fighting out of Section 8 MMA, Charity Walker! Charity Walker making her way to the cage right now. Amateur record of five wins, three losses, 23 years of age. Hey, I tell you what, Chuck, I got a quick question for you. Sure, Grant, shoot. You know what I love about Pittsburgh? All the trails. I love all the trails. I love the fact that Pittsburgh is a city built within a mountain. Anytime you go to a nice downtown urban metropolitan area, you're still going to see little patches of forest and mountain and rocks and trails everywhere you go. People hunt in urban areas of Pittsburgh. There's deer everywhere. And that's why there is such a strong need for things like quads, Polaris Rangers, dirt bikes, four-wheelers, anything that involves off-roading. You know what I mean? Where Pe can I get one, Grant? Well, I tell you what. I know of a good place that I heard about called Mesitis Motorsports. Pittsburgh local, Pittsburgh proud, and they do it right when it comes to four-wheelers, dirt bikes, anything that involves off-roading, or to be honest with you, anything that involves performance motors. I mean, I'm sure that you could get anything done to your, to your performance motors at Mesitis that you would need. You could get a performance motor put into your Polaris Ranger, and then you could go bag a buck, throw it in the back of that Ranger, haul it home, eat some dinner. You could do that with a dirt bike. Let's say you want to go race around on your dirt bike with your buddies. You want to get on your moped, ride around town on your moped, save some gas money, go to Mesitis. They can help you out with that too. Well, I know if I need a moped, I know where I'm going, Grant. I, when, where is that, Chuck? Tell Mesitis me. Mesitis Motorsports. That's, I just wanted to hear you say it. I wanted to hear it out of your mouth. Mesitis Motorsports it is. Proud sponsor of Gladiators of the Cage. And Gladiators of the Cage is glad to have Mesitis Motorsports involved. It really is a perfect match. I mean, how, how much better could, could it get as a company to have your name in the corner of an event like Gladiators of the Cage? People are going to see that little logo in the corner. You see that there, folks? Bottom right-hand corner, Mesitis? That's going to be there anytime you watch this video for the rest of the, the, the existence of time when people want to see this cage fight. That's a very valuable spot, I think. Anyway, walking out now, we've got Melissa Gastic, very, very highly touted Pittsburgh local. What do you have to say about her, Chuck? Grant, I'm a big fan of Melissa Gastic. One thing I love about her, when you get to see her outside of the cage, she's always smiling. She is the smiling, best smile in MMA, I say all the time really really approachable really personable person uh, really think a lot of her she's actually in the National Guard and she's right now active duty in recruiting and uh, boy she ha is coming off a tremendous victory in a very big promotion known as King of the Cage I'm sure fight fans out there have heard it before in a definitive fashion she won by a spectacular spinning back fist oh, oh King of the Cage you say Chuck that's correct Grant well it's interesting that you say that because we have a future King of the Cage fight featuring Melissa Gastic. It's King of the Cage, Hands of Steel, on Saturday, September 26th of this year. We also have Gladiators of the Cage fighters, one that is in fact competing tonight, Adam Milstead. We've Main got, event fighter. Yeah, absolutely. We've got Ethan Goss, also has fought many times under the Gladiators of the Cage banner, and the girl you see in front of you right now, Melissa Gastic. That's right, that's King of the Cage, Hands of Steel. That's Saturday, May 26th, 2015. Don't forget our friend, Mr. Francis Healy. Oh, Francis, Mad Dog Healy's on that fight. We've got, comma, the Death Star Worthy is on that fight. We just saw Josh Frem. Josh Frem is fighting on there. Cody Carlheim is fighting. Many, many people that you've seen in both arenas are going to be in, at that fight. Looking forward to that. September 26th. Let's send it over to our ring announcer, Dan Bogan, for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this is for the Gladiators of 
the Cage Amateur Flyweight Women's Championship of the World. And it is being contested under Advanced Amateur Rules, three three-minute rounds. First, fighting out of the blue corner, she weighed in at 124 pounds. She stands five feet, five inches tall, 23 years of age. She has an amateur record of five wins and three losses. She fights for Section 8 MMA. She's from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Charity Walker! And her opponent weighed in at 125 pounds. She stands five feet, three inches tall, 27 years of age. She has a record of four wins, no losses. She fights out of the Matt Factory and Brute Squad. She's from Glassport, Pennsylvania. It's Melissa Gastic! Let's go to Chip Steiner for the final instructions. Face each other. Okay, ladies, we went over the rules in the back. I expect you to obey them and me at all times. Any questions red? That's right. Any questions blue? Touch close. Let's go back to the corners. Chip okay, Snyder here we go. Prepping the cage. Fighter, you Letting ready? Fighter, you ready? Boss. Let's bang! Here we go, Melissa Gastic, Charity Walker, starting out round one. This is for the title, folks. I think this is going to be a stand-up fight. Maybe. A little awkward stutter step on a lead kick there by Charity Walker, but she's already got a very nice, almost like a swan grip of a Muay Thai clinch. I'm surprised that Melissa went for that clinch so quick and looking for the hip throw, looking for a takedown. Hey, Walker's got some good knees in this clinch. I mean, she's already fed a couple of lead knees into the solar plexus here of Gastic. Do not let looks deceive you. These girls may be pretty, but the way they can come and fight. Melissa getting the, both the double underhooks. Looks for, oh, almost looked like an easy takedown. Charity almost reversed it. Melissa staying high. I think she's prepping for the arm bar. She's looking high. Yeah, Walker turning her back. She needs Not to Not a good move here. Feet. If Melissa can step over, she has an arm bar. All she has to do is step the left leg around the head. She's got the arm bar. She has to straighten oh, it out. Wow. I think Walker's out. I think Walker turned. She's got herself in a situation where she can put, bend her arm. Yeah, and Charity Walker's out. She just needs to pass that guard right away. Good job of Charity to get out of that. Not a good idea to hang out in the guard with Melissa Gastic. Walker's number one priority needs to be passing that guard, getting to a stable side mount, or possibly even to a half guard position, because there's a triangle uh -oh, about that. Oh, here. Good reversal. She's still looking. She's really tight. Here's the triangle transition that you mentioned, Grant. Gastic's just, she's doing the, the, the crocodile roll right now. She's got her in She's some switching weird it to triumphs. the arm bar. Great job by Charity to step over. She's got to get the other foot over. This is almost the same position we've seen Friend in. If she cannot step over that other foot, Melissa doing a good job holding it. Charity's out. Wow, Charity Walker's doing a great job with the scramble, though. I mean, I have to give it to her. She's been in a few tight situations with the jiu-jitsu, but she's done a great job pulling out and staying calm. Loving that she's elbowing Melissa Gastic right in the butt cheek. <laughs> it, no, I'm, it's not even like a joke. That seriously can... can Still, but you know, affect your ability to it's stand gonna back up. It's going to completely tighten up your glute muscles. It's yep. going to completely make everything hard. Right, You're not going to be able to move. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you give three or four hard shots to the to the gluteus maximus on the ground and then the ref stands you back up, good luck pivoting off that leg. That's not going to be fun. Right. Where else do you get to elbow somebody in the butt but glad he used the cage? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> we don't have to talk about my childhood, bro. <laughs> Nice combination. Wow. wow. Good hips. Gazdick with really good hips. That's the throw she was looking for earlier. Another nice knee by Gazdick. Charity doing a very good job countering everything that Melissa's doing. Yeah, I mean, Charity's very got, got very good defense in so far, and she's staying really calm, you can tell. But Make sure I, I think she needs red. to just have a little bit better game plan. I, I'm thinking she's going to get into the second round, and I hope that her corners tell her that she needs to change up her game plan here in this fight. Short time, ladies. Because Gastic's just smothering. She's just going for sub attempt, sub attempt, sub attempt. And in any judge's eyes, that is a win. I mean, yeah. Stop. Stop. And she will eventually finish one of those submissions. You can only play Houdini so many times, Grant. Absolutely. I think I like that at the beginning of the first round, Walker had a nice tie up. She had a couple really great knees to the midsection of Gastic. And I think that that just kind of went out the window as soon as Gastic got her onto the mat. Right. I think that Walker's key to success is going to keep standing as much as possible. Yeah. It's, interesting. it's going to be very interesting to see how the second round game plan unfolds for both of these fighters. 
Yeah. I mean, both of them look relatively like fresh. A, not that much <laughs> significant damage between either of them, I don't think. Charity gave me a kind of a fun fact when I was talking to her before the event. She actually says she has already over an hour of cage time. So she's put a lot of time in that cage fighting on shows. Wow, that's a very interesting stat. Five and three, eight fights over an hour. Wow. How is that possible? Eight, eight times nine, 70. I guess if she went to a bunch of decisions, eight times nine, 70. Round two, you ready? You ready? Come yeah, on, let's go. Your math is really good, Brad. I'm a carpenter. That's what I do. Good, good distance being kept right now by Charity Walker. She needs to stay back. She really wants to use her striking. She made mention to me that she really wants to stand up. I wouldn't think Melissa has any problem doing it. Oh, good oh, overhand. Wow. Right. I, I, don't, I do think Walker made a mistake by circling toward the cage. She yes. needs to be circling toward the center of the mat, staying away from the cage because that's where Gastic's going to drag her down. Melissa Gastic is not a double leg shot type of fighter. She's not going to, as far as I can tell, she's never really shot a double, never shot a single, gone for anything like that. Uh, she, she wants to get you in the cage, drag you down, play that game. She's very, very good at making the fight really gritty and really going for those judo throws, those high hip tosses. Right. Charity's already seen to become accustomed to that. She's already changing levels. And look how she's really grapevined around Melissa Gazdick's left leg. She's not letting her throw. This is true. This is a position we saw in the first round. Uh, you know, having that leg kind of tied up, Gazdick kind of hip to hip with her. Charity's going to take a good job. Yeah, I mean, Charity's on the top. She's back in the guard of Gastic, though, and this isn't where she wants to be. If I were if I were Charity, I would be on, doing Blue, everything in my do power to let you sit there. get Gastic on her back, stand back up, and have referee oh, look, chips leg lock. Oh, she's going for deep Don't Achilles. And she's really Whoa. She's going down. This Whoa. is really You're tight. That. You're turning. See if how Melissa can defend this. She's got the knee bent, so she's pretty much out of this move. But Charity's got to let that go and quit eating those punches. This is another interesting aspect of this turn amateur it. MMA rules. Yeah. She's not allowed to do any twisting leg locks. She cannot turn that into a heel hook, which would be the finish of the fight. And I know Chip right now saying no twisting leg locks because you could see Charity wanting to go for it. And really, that was set up there. But once again, you said it, Grant, the amateur rules will not allow that. Yeah, I mean, she, what she was doing was called an Achilles lock, where you basically get the blade of your forearm, place it across the Achilles tendon of your opponent's leg, and you basically try to wrench their leg and pop that tendon. Right. That is considered a straight leg lock. You are allowed to do that. Once we get into the professional fight, you'll do what's called a twisting leg lock, and you'll also be able to execute those. But Melissa's really pouring it on here, working body, body, head, and it seems again like Charity may be searching for a knee bar now or another straight leg lock. There's that knee bar. She's coming across in a... Odd way, but she's. Oh, she, it's, it's only too bad she can't. She would have a really beautiful heel hook right here. She just can't do the heel hooks, can't twist those. Too much of a risk of damaging a fighter's ankle or knee, especially in the amateur division. You know, the amateur fighters, we have we have people that need to go to work in the morning. Right. You know, you can't be twisting somebody's leg all apart. Right. And Chip Snyder is a Sambo man himself, which is primarily a lot of leg locks and twisting leg locks, so he knows what to look for. Did you ever roll with Chip? No, Short I never had the chance. Fighters. I've rolled with Chip. He'll. He'll make you feel dumb. That dude's all over your legs. He's, he's tapped me on many of the time. Stop. Chip's a true martial artist. Another beautiful round in the books. Gastic implementing her game plan perfectly. Obviously what Gastic wants to do, press her opponent up against the cage, land a couple of shots coming in, get, a, get a hold of her, drag her to the mat and submit her. I mean, I, I don't exactly know if it's in her game plan to be pulling guard and having her opponent on top of her so much. It's only a matter of the judges don't like to see somebody on their back. Sometimes that can go badly for you, but Gastic has been 100% dominant this entire fight. Yeah, I would agree. You know, it's interesting enough. I don't know this answer, so I'm going to have to find this out myself. Charity Walker fights out of Section 8 MMA, and they're out of uh, Salem, North Carolina, I believe. Maybe their rules may be different in the Andy fights where they can work a lot more twisting leg locks. I'm not sure of that. Absolutely. Pennsylvania is very strict on their amateur MMA rules. Section 8, interesting of note, means a, a mentally... Uh, I'm sorry, an insanity discharge in the military. If you're if you're crazy, if you're out of your mind in the military, the they'll you kick ready? you out and they'll call Come it a on, Section let's 8. Finish That's it. what uh, Corporal Klinger was trying to get in MASH. Not talking about Section 8 housing, folks. And how interesting that she's fighting the Army recruiter. Yeah. 
Yeah, Melissa Gastic, a full-time uh, National Guard member, what you'd call an active reservist. She's active duty on an Army National Guard reserve base. So she can she's active duty in the Army, but she's in her hometown. It's kind of a nice deal. Yeah, no doubt. It allows her to keep doing the sport she loves. And we keep seeing her growing as a fighter. I'd really like to see Charity let her hands go a little bit. I know she's afraid of getting tied up. She keeps circling away from the power of Melissa Gazdick, so she's circling to her own left. But every time she does that, she's getting closer to the cage, and she's playing into the game that Gazdick wants. This clinch, Gazdick so far has won this. Oh, time. low blow? Come over here. You don't see that a lot hey. in female MMA, right I'm not going to lie. This is uh, We may have to check Come the here. replay on that one, guys. But yeah. That was Stay definitely... Right it looked like that one may have been south there. Take a breather, okay? Yeah. In a few seconds here, we're going to see the replay. Now, according to uh, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission, uh, she has up to five minutes to recover from a low blow strike. Now, it's up to her discretion. If she wants to continue to go, uh, she could, as far as I know, even say that she's done fighting. But most fighters are able to recover after a few minutes. But she does have up to five minutes. Yeah, and Melissa is definitely not known as a dirty fighter. This just happens. Here's the, here's, well, that was, yeah, there's the replay. Let's, let's go back a little further, and we'll see what happened there. Okay, let's hear Tied up, 50-50 going for the... Little. As soon as you're ready, you tell me. Okay? It's going to look like Melissa's right in the... Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, and the ladies okay. do not have the same okay. protective gear that men do in MMA. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, make no mistake, that hurts no matter who you are. That's not a, that's not a good way to <laughs> Yeah, go. that's just... That was a really solid knee. Well, it looks like they're back to live action now. See, this is what I'm saying. Gastic doesn't throw a lot of, shoot a lot of double leg takedown. She doesn't drop her levels a lot. No. Like, I, I mean, if, I, if you were to study her and fight her, I would say you could have a good uppercut that would be ready for her whenever she does that kind of a, a very short drop in her elevation and tries to get a tie up. Yep, yep. D a good job once again of Charity. Great finding that leg so she doesn't get tossed. Melissa, every time she's done that takedown, it's been from you know a headlock to a toss, a hip toss. I think Charity needs to throw it can be a one-two and then be ready with a big, powerful, you know, a six uppercut. Something whenever Gastic drops her level just a little bit and tries to get the tie-up. That, that's what she's going to do. Charity will throw a couple. Melissa will pop under her arms, get a hold of her body, and, and tie it up. Well, you can definitely see Charity. She's circling to her own left. She's trying to avoid the power of Melissa Gastic, but it's getting her closer to the fence the whole time. And every time she circles to her left, Melissa recognizes that, which is a very very smart move by her and she closes the distance and she's getting this high clinch it's not making for the most exciting fight but it's definitely effective as far as taking advantage of those positions oh 100 percent dominance throughout this whole fight i mean wow, that's look at that charity's going for a big takedown it was almost like she was like ready to explode there and she was out of frustration yeah gonna slam her but i mean just not not a great execution less than 30 seconds left in the third round of this fight I think Gastic has had a fairly dominant performance through all three rounds, just considering he needs to work the knees here. Time. There it is. There's the knee. She needs to work the knees and come out, break this puncher. She's got her up against the cage. This is going to, she's got to be starting to throw that right hand. Her right hand is free. There it is. She needs to keep working that. She has to go for broke here. It's only too bad. She can't knee to the head in this amateur division. Be interesting to see how this fight would have played out if it was on pro rules. Oh, absolutely. I think that that heel hook could have had a greater effect. The, the leg lock attempt could have been a lot different, um, you know, but also Gastic with her, her stuff on the ground, if she were able to throw elbows, that might have a really big effect also. A lot of things change whenever you go from one to the other, but I do think that we're about to see Melissa Gastic get, get uh, handed the belt here in a, a couple of seconds. Yeah, Green, it seems that way. I, I would, if, if it didn't happen that way, I'd want to know why. Absolutely. Let's see if we can get a shot at the instant replay. A lot of great things happen here in this fight. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, we don't have an instant replay, but that's okay because we know pretty much what happened. What it was was, uh, you know... It was a lot of the same, Grant. Yeah, a lot of the same. Charity would throw a couple. Melissa tied up with her, dragged her to the ground, attempted about 50 submissions. I mean, it was a very, very dominant performance by Melissa Gaston. I am kind of confused. Uh, you know, she's training with the Mat Factory. She's got Isaac there, you know, head coach of the Mat Factory. It just seems odd that there wasn't more setups for double leg takedowns or even single legs. It, it was all more high clinches and tie-ups. 
Yeah, absolutely. Gastic, I mean, she has her own way of fighting. She always has kind of done her own thing, and she knows what she's strong at and what she's good at. Uh, she's been very successful with her own, her own approach to fighting. And it's just, you know, with, with fighting, I, I always think it's just making what works for you just work. You know, if, if you have a different set of tools, you know, if you're a judo black belt, you're going to do more judo tosses. If you're a, a Golden Gloves champion boxer, you're going to box more. It just is what it is. You always go back to your bread and butter. You know what I would do? I mean, after I get this belt, if I were Melissa Gastic, I would set up my whole day tomorrow, and I would just, I would go to, I would go to Mesitis Motorsports. Motorsports, exactly, and I would get, I don't know, a dirt bike or a quad, and I would just spend the day just riding, just going free. With your belt on. Oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, our judges have scored to fight a unanimous decision. All three judges have scored it 30-27. For your winner, fighting out of the red corner, and you're new! That is in the cage, amateur flyweight champion of the world, Melissa Gostick! Go okay? Mackenzie! I, I called that for a low blow. I don't know if it was, it was close. And that's why I'd rather be safe than yeah, sorry safe with the man. amateurs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you did good. So. How does it feel to be undefeated and win the title? Uh, good. Does the Army National Guard help you train for these fights? Yeah, you know, I love it. They make sure that I get time to train. And I mean, that always comes first, obviously, but they ensure that I have the time to go train and they're very supportive of it. That's awesome, congratulations. Um, I'd just like to thank everybody who helped me prepare for this. First and foremost, the Math Factory and my teammates there. Then Jeremy at the Brute Squad, and they have all undefeated fighters as well. I get the best training. Olympus Boxing has the best boxing coach you can imagine. Thank you to all my friends and family who continuously come and support me. And if I forgot anybody, I'm really sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, the new amateur ladies champion of the world, Melissa Gastic. Again, well, we Grant, the best smile in the MMA, and the she's going to have a lot of smiling to be doing. She's the new the, uh, amateur champion of Gladiators the Cage. Breast cancer. Each and every Absolutely. Penny from it goes in the very, very long her time her coming from Melissa Gastic. A couple of years, in fact. Coming up next, we've got Dalton Donkey Brady taking on Jason Alexander in our first professional bout of the evening. Before that, though, we're going to have a lot of uh, commercials for you folks to watch, and we're going to go on an intermission for about 10 minutes or so. We'll see you when we get back.